the director for the National Incubation Center. And we are with us four wonderful guests. Ehsan Saya from Taraz, Asfin Jafar from Hub Leather, Badr Khushnud from Fishery, and Nadia Ganji from Fimpro. Uh, so, my first question is Nadia, not from the rest of the rest. There is no problem with my haircut. Do you have a problem with your problem? <laughs> and how are you resolving this challenge? I had solved the undercover. Uh, so, uh, yeah. uh, uh, there we go. Uh, so, uh, I don't have to eat my wife's wife. So, I don't have to eat my wife's wife. I don't have to eat my I figured out a way. Actually, Punjab ne ek din ke liye khola tha, just for one day. Uh, and so I was it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Have you tried dadimooch.com? Uh, so they have all the accessories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I will have to start getting accessories because I think when the lockdown is over, I'll get to the point. Very good. I just so, uh, you know, um, I've been looking at the situation as it's evolving and uh, everybody's been having this conversation around coronavirus, lockdown, non-lockdown and so on. I think it's in the record uh, or, you know, people dying, not dying, kitne log, you know, uh, effect hongi. so all of that sad tragedy on one side, if you make it to the side, to the or what I'm also seeing is that there's a massive consumer behavior shift happening. Uh, forced to adopt people to adopt, uh, from the company's ki side se bhi or users' ki side. Se bhi. So, so both sides, you know, buy, buying side, selling side, both sides. Right? Uh, a massive shift and it will be that most probably uh, a lot of the shift, the digital transformation that you know, uh, Badr and I have been uh, looking at for the last 10 years, wo ho, ho te, ho te, you know, it, seemed, it always seems like two years away. So I think this is the one accelerating moment ke jiske jo hai, jo chide, aur ye, and this is true for Pakistan and the world right now. In the world, the things that were going to be acceleration, ki Jo delay hoti thi, ya speed se hoti thi, different longer resistance aata tha. So the way I see it is that if I look at my personal life, then um, uh, office or office ka commute or us tarah se kaam karna does not make sense anymore. Uh, or I, I may be you know ahead of the curve compared to you know the, a, a large number of people. Lekin or aap log bhi kaafi saare honge. Lekin uh, what I'm saying is that even for me at a personal level, there's a huge shift from before pre-corona and post-corona. Similarly, if I think retail, ka sochu, I can't imagine that we make so many malls. I mean, I should go to a park, I should go to the beach. Uh, why do I need to entertain myself? And if I want to make a mall, then it should be a play area. Ki hona something, something else. So, so why do we need to go somewhere to shop? Um, so a lot of that will... So, so I see it the same way as that before, people have to walk from the beach. They have to do, go somewhere, they have to walk. Now we go to the park. So I think shopping will also become similar. Uh, I think office jana bhi will become similar. Okay, it's like going to the park. Okay, you are going to effort because you socialize karna hai, so team ke milna hai, you're getting together. You are in retail. You are going to the shopping ki experience. Ke liye jana hai. Otherwise, abhi, abhi to pa, hamari, hamari mindset ke ye bhi tha, as a consumer, ke you would prefer to go you know, actually. But uh, you know, second option is online. You know, globally, there was a shift. Ho gaya tha, so, um, and then the third education in the way yoga, I think, university is not there, you know, physical infrastructure is not built in this purpose. You can have places where people come together, that you know, called libraries or learning spaces, and people can have community and people can talk to each other. But that should be from a, from a different perspective, not to sit in a class and attend a lecture. Because if you attend a lecture, attend karna hai, toh wo online would uh, function much better. If you have to socialize, so the socialization ka jahan pe element is not there, then we will do this. So if I look at all of this, so I, what I'm seeing is that the world is moving really fast. Saal mein karna tha, wo saal mein karegi, saal mein so which gives us the opportunity to do this in the world, 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 irrational ki government abhi jis tarah se kaam karti hai considering ki kya technology aur kitni penetration ho chuki hai mobile ki aur ab consumer behavior shift bhi aa gaya i think that also creates a huge opportunity so what i like to hear from you is uh, you know the point of this context is 
कि लेट्स फोकस ऑन के हेल्थ और कोरोना को साइड पे रखते हैं लेट्स लुक एट द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एंड द अपॉर्चुनिटी व्हिच इज आल्सो व्हाट वी नीड टू माय व्यू इज कि दिस अदर इशू इज कि अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट अगर ज्यादा होनी है तो उसको एड्रेस करने के लिए वी नीड टू फिगर आउट अ न्यू वे ऑफ डूइंग थिंग्स एंड फास्टर एंड वी नीड टू ऑल फिगर आउट यू नो हाउ टू एम्प्लॉय मोर पीपल हाउ टू यू नो गेट मोर एंटरप्रेन्योर्स टू स्टार्ट कंपनीज सो दैट होल प्रोसेस आल्सो हैज टू स्टार्ट सो आई विल स्टार्ट विद बदर आई थिंक जी बिल्कुल थैंक यू सो मच शाहजहां आई थिंक बहुत सारी चेंजेस बिल्कुल ऐसे जैसे आपने कहा हो रही हैं और रिटेल वाली साइड पे भी आ रही हैं आई थिंक एक एक और क्वेश्चन जो अराइज हो रहा है कि क्या जो हमारा ओल्ड नॉर्मल था प्रीवियस नॉर्मल था क्या डू वी रियली वॉन्ट टू गो बैक टू दैट प्रीवियस नॉर्मल इज वो जो इतना वर्नरेबल नॉर्मल था जो इतनी जल्दी डिस्टर्ब्ड हो गया कि विद इन मैटर ऑफ फ्यू वीक्स एवरी थिंग इज डिस्टर्बेड तो इज दैट द राइट नॉर्मल और क्या हमें उसको उसका एक नया वर्जन ऑफ नॉर्मल को एक्सेप्ट करने की जरूरत है या उसमें चेंज आने की जरूरत है सो फ्रॉम फ्रॉम अ रिटेल परस्पेक्टिव एंड कमिंग फ्रॉम फिशरी परस्पेक्टिव वट आई सीन इज दैट एकदम ई कॉमर्स की मर्चेंट्स की नीड्स बढ़नी शुरू हो गई हैं और वो डीप डाइव करना शुरू हो गए एंड दे रियलाइज कि अच्छा कम अज कम जो स्टॉक है वो स्टॉक तो हम मूव आउट कर लें इन्वेंट्री कॉस्ट तो मिनिमाइज कर लें अगर प्रोडक्शन अभी नहीं भी शुरू हो पा रही है सो दैट्स वन सेंस ऑफ अर्जेंसी आई एम सींग और हर कोई सोच रहा है और जाना चाह रहा है ई कॉमर्स की तरफ बट माइंड सेट इतना ओपन नहीं हुआ अनफॉर्चुनेटली सो माइंड सेट का चैलेंज ये आ रहा है कि अभी भी वी स्टिल थिंक के आई जो डिपार्टमेंट है कंपनी का ट्रेडिशनल एस का वो डिजिटल ही है और वो कैपेक्स मॉडल पे जाना चाहते हैं बिकॉज वो सेट तो होते नहीं है उनके लिए आर ओ आई इज नॉट अ चैलेंज वो देखते हैं कि मेरे पास क्या कंट्रोल रहेगा मैं नए सर्वर ले लूं मेरा पुराना हो गया मेरा लैपटॉप इसी बहाने नया आ जाएगा इसी में मुझे जो बाहर की एक कंपनी जिसका मैं लाइसेंस ले रहा हूं वो मुझे एक ट्रेनिंग भी ट्रिप करा देगी दुबई का या बाहर का सो so, और उसी में मैं फिर अवार्ड के लिए अप्लाई भी कर लूंगा और मैं एक कोई पाकिस्तानी या एशियन बेस्ट अवार्ड भी विन कर लूंगा इसमें तो वो ही लुक्स इन टू लार्जर परस्पेक्टिव ऑन इज ओन विद इन इज ओन जूरिस्टिक्शन एंड नॉट नेसेसरिली रिफ्लेक्ट जो एक ओनर ऑफ द कंपनी आर ओ आई के एंगल से देखना चाहती है तो माइंड सेट अभी भी वहां चैलेंजिंग है और एक और एक्सपेक्टेशन ये है कि एवरी वन थिंग्स के डिजिटल के अंदर जो इवन किसी ने मुझे एडवाइस भी देनी है वो तो फ्री होनी चाहिए एडवाइस कंसल्टिंग के लिए पैसे देने को तो कोई सोचता ही नहीं है तो हेंस दीज आर द टू चैलेंजेस इन द लोकल मार्केट स्पेसिफिकली तो वो कहते हैं एडवाइस तो आप प्रपोजल तो हमें सारा सब कुछ आप बना के दे देना वो बाद में आपसे करवाएं या ना करवाएं अलग बात है बट आप हमें सब बता दें एंड दे डोंट वैल्यू नॉलेज एज समथिंग टू बी पेड फॉर एंड एंड स्पेशली व्हेन वी आर माइग्रेटिंग वेरी फास्ट और ट्रांजिशनिंग वेरी फास्ट टू द नॉलेज इकोनॉमी सो दैट्स अ चैलेंज सो सो आई विल कम टू अस्वन यार अस्वन यार यू नो यू रन रिटेल शॉप्स एंड सो वन सेटिंग अप अ रिटेल शॉप जिस तरह की आपकी है आई थिंक प्रोबेबली कॉस्ट 10 मिलियन रुपीस ईच यू कैन करेक्ट मी यू नो इफ आई एम रियली ऑफ <laughs> and um, so uh, you know when you go into digital to fir expectation jo hai jaisa badal keh raha hai wo ye kyun hoti hai ki wo ekdam se crash karke bahut niche aa jayega iski kya wajah hai so it crash karke uh, so just i don't understand the question with the beach mein connection ka issue ho gaya what will crash sorry no so uh, you know when you set up a retail shop and this is mm-hmm. talking about one outlet that costs a lot of money you know mm-hmm. uh, 8 million rupees or, or or you know whatever the size of the outlet is mm-hmm. so but when we abhi you know if retailers are going to adopt more digital and they going to transition uh so we have seen ke technology companies jitni hoti hain unki jo major investment hoti hai wo hr ke andar tech ke andar apne systems ko build karne pe us pe this is more around knowledge capital lekin hamare yahan companies jo hain wo aam taur pe physical infrastructure pe to bade you know comfortably invest kar leti hain lekin jab ye aata hai investment into non physical aspects of your business to wahan pe you know the thought process is not that long term or that visionary 
I think uh, uh, I think what is important here is uh, who the retailers are. There are a lot of retailers who sort of are you know older generation, so they are used to traditional retail where you have brick and mortar, you're dealing with the customer and so on. But, you, but at the same time, I would say there are a lot of retailers and brands, ours and many others out there, especially in the fashion side, who with with the uh, um, with the newer generation coming in, especially. You know, people who are uh, a lot of uh, retail businesses are family businesses. So you will see a lot of uh, the newer generation coming in and they are the ones who cha- make the change and see and are more themselves if they are, if they, if they, if they uh, are shopping online or, or be it here or abroad, they, then they are more uh, sort of uh, interested in taking businesses online. And I think those are the businesses which, which, are, which you will see doing well. Uh, uh, or even if the owner is not necessarily that generation, but you have that positive, uh, that progressive mindset. So I think that is that is changing. But but I think at the same time we have to realize that in Pakistan, retail, in the real sense, sort of the growth, that huge growth uh, started in around 2012 onwards, and we've been going at 200 miles per hour in terms of retail, in terms of opening, you know, stores, investing in uh, uh, brands, in infrastructure, in malls. You know, high streets, markets. So it's been going very fast in that sense. And e-commerce has also been growing. But uh, uh, for a lot of people, even now, e-commerce, uh, for a lot of brands out there, most of them, I would say, it's, it's like 5 7 8% of their, of their total revenues. There are a few exceptions. So for them, it's, bigger, it's larger. Uh, but I would say that uh, the, the pattern is there and you see more and more people going in that direction. But again, uh, uh, you'll see bigger companies and brands uh, uh, who have uh, larger networks who realize this. Uh, and I think are even using sort of e-commerce as a tool to uh, sort of uh, explore new markets. For example, this is also, it's also about the mindset. If you, if you sort of have your uh, online uh, business and you're selling in all kinds of cities, you can look at maybe where should I open my next store? But I think at the same time, as I mentioned, that uh, we have been re- people have been focused on brick and mortar because the, de- the supply has been adding, malls have been coming, markets have been opening. Everybody's been going in that direction. But I think with this current situation with the uh, COVID-19 crisis where from 200 miles per hour says zero. So everybody is revisiting now uh, uh, Keji, uh, what is the way forward for brick and mortar and for online and you know how do we su- survive moving forward so everything is now changed and will change moving forward as well. So uh, I'll come back to you on this survival of the question. Uh, Asan, uh, what do you feel? You know, what's the future going to be like? Uh, uh, Can the really accelerate the digital transformation in Pakistan? Or will it be back to, you know, the old normal? Um, no, I think, uh, I think this will be a structural change. You know, I think there's certain areas of the economy that either have a structural change or ones that, you know, sort of go down and then go right back up. And then there's no structural changes to the economy. I think this uh, is the actually this segment, the digital segment, is may structural changes um, And the reason I believe that is, I, I think also people have uh, have realized that you know there's there's other ways of doing business that they need to also do to in order to diversify their risk uh, profile. If you look and Aswinthi I talked about this as well, is that there's a lot more interest now from big brands towards going digital, towards going online. There's also a lot more interest from small medium businesses. Because, uh, you know, I think at least uh, for the medium term, the impacts of this are going to continue, whether uh, whether the lockdown finishes or not, uh, you know, the number of people that were on the streets are going to the malls, it's, it's obviously going to decrease. So I think it's may a structural change, I guess, it's may, uh, people will push towards digitization. And uh, I think it will, uh, I think it's going to hopefully get us there. It's going to, you know, we have been trying you know, all of us, I think, have been trying to push towards digitization and what uh, what we all could not do, Corona may have done. Um, but I think it's also making people realize the benefits of it. Like, um, you know, I'll give you an example of even of Daraz. Um, and, uh, you know, I get a good price and I get a good discount and I'll shop once in a while when I need a discount. But it became from... Um, discount focused to need and convenience focused ke bhaiya mujhe ghar se nikalne ki zarurat nahi hai ek cheez mere ghar pe pahunch jati hai um you know i can look at the best prices across the, all of pakistan and i can get something i can get something to my doorstep and i think that mindset is is starting to shift but i i also do agree with brother it's not a you know i think it uh, unfortunately i think um, in a lot of 
in a lot of places in the world, uh, you know, as soon as lockdowns happened, uh, e-commerce companies just shot up. I think in instances in Pakistan, um, and and not to say it was right or wrong, but I think it was just there was a lot of uncertainty. So Nika gets her cheese rolled off, you know, stop everything. And I think that um, that sort of was uh, it would have been helpful if at that point it was this this industry could have really helped in two areas. One is in getting consumers the right products that they need, but also you know in marketplace that we both talk But I can also speak on behalf of of other companies that have uh, warehouses, is that you can actually get the economy running again, right? You can get the economy running without you having to have a physical interaction. Now, up to the physical interaction mall pe hota hai, ye hota hai ki aap mall jaate hain and you may not buy something. You may just go walk around, see friends, AC ke liye chale gaye, and you know you just say ki bhai ab uh, you know I I don't need to buy anything. I'll come back home. But Online, it's a very different interaction. You do all your research. I've heard these things. But physical interaction, that's what happens when you actually click, uh, check out, click. So that also, I think we need to understand that that element needs to be promoted from uh, from from both private entities as well as public entities. And I think uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure the guys here will also uh, will agree that you know we have, Alhamdulillah, we've received a lot of support from from uh, from the both the federal and provincial government. And I think, inshallah, if we get that right support, then this structural change will be a positive structural change. You know, and these structural changes um, sometimes come out of instances like this. And you know, I was also seeing that Alibaba had a really fast growth trajectory in 2003, 2004, and this happened when um, when SARS happened because internet penetration increased, uh, consumerism uh, had a different mindset and different approach to it. So. You know that's a long-winded way of saying I do think a structural change will come, inshallah, and I think uh, hopefully then people start thinking towards digitization and and how technology can benefit uh, the consumers and Pakistan. Okay, Nadia, your views? Uh, so I can speak more from uh, the women perspective. Uh, um, there has been like I mean a lot of women have already been selling online, but they've been limited to social uh, platforms like Facebook. And now, since this Corona thing has happened, uh, we're seeing a lot of them wanting to make their own websites, and they don't want to remain limited uh, limited to the social uh, media aspect. And also, another thing for a lot of women entrepreneurs, the major uh, selling platform has been these exhibitions. Uh, the reason being, it gives them flexibility. They just create an inventory, they sell it, and then they have this break. For another exhibition, it comes to create. And for online, they need to be consistent. But this mindset change is. happening now because um the main exhibition season that is generally from feb going on to april that i think almost 90% of that was kind of wiped out because of this corona virus things so we are seeing that change uh, even on groups that was already there lekin jo website aur e-commerce wala jo ek um a change aaya hai moving ahead of the facebook pages that's happened post covid and i see that growing and i see a lot of women now wanting to explore platforms uh, like even shopify or fishery and they wanting to sign up on the raz uh, food panda i'm seeing a lot of home based food sellers now want to sign up there because uh, during this covid thing it's easier for them to deliver through food panda till a few weeks ago we seeing we were seeing some of the same women hesitating because of the commission aspect or the sign up fee that they had but there is a clear mindset change and um, and i think once they they adapt to this or they already signed up on multiple platforms i i see this only growing at least in this space okay thank you so so brother uh, how is e-commerce doing what are the numbers like brother was nahi aari nahi mujhe awaaz nahi aayi आप लोगों को आ रही है अभी भी नहीं आ रही अब आ रही यस Take off my headphones. Um, I, I have a couple of slides. Uh, if you permit, I'll quickly yes. share the numbers from clearly Pakistan के specific e-commerce के we we can uh, share. So, one so this digital landscape only uh, slide is which we mostly discuss. So, I just want to highlight one thing. I just want to highlight one thing. I think we know most of the numbers. A interesting number, which is on the top and in the, in the, on the most right, which is the one percent of credit cards. That only one percent of the population has credit cards. So, if we talk online payments, we talk about e-commerce. For example, so we are very restricted because total overall banked economy, which is only twenty percent, 
सो दैट्स अनदर चैलेंज कि अभी हमें सी हम कैशलेस या कॉन्टैक्ट लेस ई कॉमर्स डिलीवरीज नहीं कर पाते हैं बिकॉज पूरी इकोनॉमी बैंक ही नहीं है एंड हेंस पीपल आर नॉट एबल टू पे ऑनलाइन और थ्रू इधर थ्रू इधर मोबाइल वॉलेट्स और क्रेडिट कार्ड्स एंड तो इसलिए वो एक एक ये नंबर था विच आई थॉट वुड बी इंटरेस्टिंग एक और नंबर है विच इज इंटरेस्टिंग कि हमारी अपॉर्चुनिटी कितनी है क्रॉस बॉर्डर के लिए भी सो जस्ट टू शेयर ये डेटा इज बेस्ड ऑन द साइज ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट्स ऑफ ईच कंट्री सो ये मैप जो बना हुआ है ये कंट्रीज की एक्सपोर्ट्स का साइज है एंड इफ यू लुक एट इट पाकिस्तान ऑन द टॉप राइट रेड सर्कल्स में अगर आप देखें तो मोस्ट लेफ्ट पे सॉरी लेफ्ट मोस्ट जो छोटा सा सर्कल है दैट इज पाकिस्तान सो फॉर टू हंड्रेड मिलियन पीपल हमारी एक्सपोर्ट ट्वेंटी टू या ट्वेंटी फोर बिलियन डॉलर कंपेयर टैट टू द बॉटम सर्कल विच इज सिंगापुर फाइव मिलियन पीपल एंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी थ्री बिलियन डॉलर ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट ह्यूज अपॉर्चुनिटी और इन कंट्रीज ने इन इन कंट्रीज में बाई दाई ये नॉलेज इकॉनमी एक्सपोर्ट नहीं है सिंगापुर की दीज आर एक्चुअल गुड्स एक्सपोर्ट Um, so there's a huge opportunity for value-added products to go out. So अभी तक हम container loads of B2B raw material content export करते रहे हैं जो हमारे जो हमारे यहाँ uh, naturally produce हमारी available है cotton हमने ऐसे ही भेज दी maximum yarn या fabric बना दिया but हमने value-added products नहीं बनाई something like in Thailand अगर आप देखें Thailand की 236 billion dollars की export है so Thailand में एक project है which is called OTOP one town one product या one village one product So, वहां उन्होंने क्या किया हुआ कि एक टाउन या एक बलेज जो उनका रिमोट एरियाज में वो सिर्फ एक चीज पर फोकस करते हैं एक सिर्फ क्वेश्चन बनाएगा एक uh, सिर्फ uh, उसके टसल्स बनाएगा एक बेड शीट्स बनाएगा सो दे रियली फोकस ऑन और स्पेशलाइज कर रहे हैं और फिर खाली प्रोडक्ट बना नहीं रहे वी डोंट रियलाइज कि ई कॉमर्स के अंदर खाली प्रोडक्ट नहीं बनानी है आपने खाली टेक्नोलॉजी की वेबसाइट नहीं खड़ी करनी है यू नीड वेरी गुड पैकेजिंग यू नीड वेरी गुड कम्युनिकेशन यू नीड वेरी गुड ब्रांडिंग यू नीड मार्केटिंग अब ये हम जनरली वेरी ऑनेस्टली मोस्टली ये हम लोग कॉपी पेस्ट कर लेते हैं हम कहते हैं यार देखो कौन है सर्च करो और उसकी पहली वाली जो दो तीन वेबसाइट्स आ रही हैं उनका कंटेंट कॉपी कर लो या उनका डिजाइन कॉपी कर लो उस तरह का लोगो बना लो सो वहाँ इनोवेशन या वहाँ टाइम नहीं स्पेंड कर रहे हैं उन क्रिएटिविटी एंड हेंस वी आर लूजिंग देयर एज वेल सो जस्ट वॉन्ट टू रिफ्लेक्ट के अपॉर्चुनिटी पर कैपिटा आउटपुट एंड एक्सपोर्ट की बहुत ज्यादा है फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान क्योंकि हमारे नेशनल पाकिस्तान में अगर आप देखें येलो बॉक्स ऑन द राइट इट्स लेस एन हाफ परसेंट जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फाइव परसेंट ऑफ टोटल रिटेल इज ऑनलाइन एंड दिस इज थर्ड पार्टी डेटा वर्सेज आर नेबरहुड इन इंडिया टू परसेंट इज ऑनलाइन यूएस में इट्स टेन परसेंट and uh, it it is being led by the east which is china 23% is online of their retail so isliye wahan aap dekhte hain qr codes istemal ho rahe hain wechat mein transaction ho rahi hain wechat ke andar sab apps aa rahi hain there are now master apps so those things are happening because a huge chunk of the retail is now online roadside and formal retail as well aur ye latest data 2020 ka hood suite ka ki pakistan ke andar jo last year year on year categories grow kiye hain wo aap dekh sakte hain top 4 categories have grown either 100 or more percent uh, significantly isme fashion and beauty hai food hai electronics hai appliances hain so this reflects jo bhi essence share kar rahe the data ke logon ne mobile phone dwara search karne shuru kar diye hain uh, so this was last year's pattern before covid uh, so this is what people have been looking for so you can see this reflects what we uh, really are doing last slide ki this is official statement of pakistan data ki pakistan ki e-commerce transactions ki kya value hai specifically तो वो जो मैंने आपको दिखाया लेस देन हाफ अ परसेंट दैट इज इक्वल टू ऑलमोस्ट हंड्रेड बिलियन रुपीज एज पर स्टेट बैंक ये स्टेट बैंक का ऑफिशियल डेटा है उनके आप 2018 की एनुअल रिपोर्ट में से डेटा निकाल सकते हैं एंड यू कैन सी दैट इट ईयर ऑन ईयर ग्रोथ ऑन ई कॉमर्स एज पर स्टेट बैंक इज 90 परसेंट एंड अब सो वी आर ग्रोइंग रैपिडली इन दिस स्पेस एंड दिस इज रिसेंटली रिफ्लेक्टेड अगर आपने नोटिस किया हो कि प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने स्पेसिफिकली ई कॉमर्स डिलीवरीज अप्रूव की कि वो अलाउ कर रहे हैं कि उन्होंने अभी लास्ट वीक के वो शुरू कर दें एंड दैट वाज कमिंग फ्रॉम अनदर पर्सपेक्टिव कि हम कैसे उनके साथ लॉबी कर रहे हैं एज अ ग्रुप ओवरऑल बट जस्ट वांट टू रिफ्लेक्ट ये करंट डेटा है सो हंड्रेड बिलियन रुपीस व्हिच इज 600 टू 700 मिलियन डॉलर्स 2018 का डेटा था आई बिलीव कि हम बिलियन डॉलर क्रॉस कर चुके होंगे ट्वेंटी में बिकॉज जैसे एस ने हाईलाइट किया कि अब वो खाली चॉइस नहीं रही अब वॉन्ट नहीं रही अब वो नीड बनता जा रहा है कन्वीनियंस के लिए so people are migrating towards uh, e-commerce and we can see that uh, in, in our data 
so that's uh, about it uh, from 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 a data perspective thank you uh, asner i want to ask you ke you know i think you're the only one here with a uh, retail presence across the country and how are businesses like you you know surviving or or planning to survive this impossible situation actually right now uh, frankly speaking it's a very tough situation uh, because from going with high, because retail brick and mortar have very high costs you know yeah. uh, associated with it rentals uh, utilities you know uh, for fixed you have normally retail because you have a front end uh, you have uh, you know sales staff and they all you know they all fixed uh, uh, income and fixed uh, staff cost so right now is a very tough situation with uh, and it's uh, with no revenues it's something that that will have its will leave its impact over the next uh, you know uh, uh, several months even after re- retail stores begin order do open i mean yes it's good to see that uh, e-commerce is partially operative uh, fully operative i mean uh, in parts of the country not so much in sin the moment that's also an issue for for retailers because even those who are based in sin are having a tough time sort of doing uh, conducting uh, uh, e-commerce businesses other uh, in other places of the same so right now i think uh, at the same time as i mentioned earlier that e-commerce is a part of retailers business is, is not a, a huge part of the moment a lot of people are focusing as i mentioned under 10% you've got people i mean at the part of the total revenue yeah so, uh, moving forward honestly speaking it's a, it's you, we see a lot of changes sort of uh, that will that will take place i mean uh another issue for retail is that in this period that we had this uh, uh, this this crisis and shutdown this is the prime period for retail and even I, I, especially when it comes to uh, clothing footwear accessories you know the fashion the discretionary goods as we as we as we call them because you've got the essentials and non essentials so non essentials come into discretionary so this was a rare key time because you had in the spring summer the festive period with the two eids then you know this all this is this is when in these four, uh, five months or so you have around a lot of people have 70% of their retail business retail revenues that come into play so if 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 we have uh, a disclosure and the impact of disclosure will continue i think a lot of retail businesses brick and mortar businesses will have very a lot of trouble moving forward i mean honestly speaking you might also see as uh, uh, closures you might also see you know and retail outlets and networks uh, shrinking you you'll see a lot of these sort of things moving forward and because uh, there is this because of social distancing and generally uh, an aversion to go out and to go into public public spaces i think uh, uh, there will be a huge impact on retail so a lot of things are uncertain at the moment even as far as opening is concerned and what will happen moving forward i mean we can take a clue from what's happening to some extent in china and maybe you know other places where uh, retail is reopening partially iran uh, also is starting to reopen very slowly you've got uh, other places also us may chale thoda bahut pehle se chal raha hai but e-commerce has always been open i mean it's a tough question because we don't really know w- w- what lies ahead but uh, it's going to be tough in the short term uh, you know i am we, we we in in fact in our um, we have a, a sort of a re- uh, association called the chain store association of pakistan where we have uh, over a, a, a 200 uh, re- retail brands and when we conducted a survey uh, and we, of which uh, you know uh, you had um, uh, more than half participated on the owner ceo and that level and we saw figures like people are expecting that you know that that 66% of people are, are expecting that customers will fear shopping in malls and in retail outlets over the next few to 6 months uh, and uh, and same time purchasing power is going to go down with the with the pc moving forward uh priorities will shift away from the items that i mentioned to you, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, negative sort of this kind of sentiment moving forward so it will change retail uh, in the short term definitely and how much it changes in the medium to long term we'll have to see so uh, jo um, malls hain are they giving relief in terms of rentals and utilities yeah, are they you know charging full prices or you know what's the relationship evolving i'm sure we evolve evolution ke andar hoga i think um, um, malls uh, most of them are sort of have realized themselves that you know and uh, obviously with with, with some dialogue uh, between uh, you know uh, brands and the malls that they have uh, given some in, in initial relief uh, but it's sort of a limited relief uh, and obviously moving i mean across the world you'll see a lot of malls in qatar dubai in the us other places where they're giving you know 
straight off the bat they're giving three months uh, rent free just to yeah. put retailers in a comfortable position yeah. uh, that at the moment is not forthcoming as yet but there is an initial sort of a, a relief that malls are giving but i think more than malls you will you'll see the issue at uh, i mean when we look at the retail sort of landscape malls are yes a big and prominent part of it they're very you know but at the same time i would say in retail in pakistan is more in the markets in the high street and that's mm-hmm. where you have a lot of individual landlords or shop owners or you know who maybe own two three four five six or then single owners so that's where you will also see most of the issues being created and uh, more of the sort of struggle with getting getting some kind of relief and and here is where i think i just want i just would like to add that a lot of governments have 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 immediately given relief to the retail sector in their in their in their um, uh, in their country because they realize that the retail sector is the front face of the economy because at the back end you've got the whole local economy you've got 50 or more sector sectors and industries that are linked with it you know manufacturing packaging uh, cottage industry services you know everybody's retail as mother uh, was also talking about you know retail has is it, it has a lot involved in it it's not just opening a store it's the whole back end involved i mean same for e-commerce it's the whole back end involved and i think uh, right now there it, it's it's an, in pakistan because of the recent growth of the retail sector you are it's not that visible and uh, in the for the policy makers which is going to be which is going to create issues going forward but i think it's not just malls we need uh, i think uh, a lot of different areas need to be sort of be, be uh, tackled no, i i i actually wanted to come to that which is ke, you know to save all these small and large businesses uh, and rental being one big headache for a lot of them especially when no zero revenue is coming in so uh, rental freeze lagna 3 mahine ka 6 mahine ka relief milna and sharing of that burden between you know landlords and tenants instead of you know it being one way ya ye ke negotiated on a case by case basis uh, so sh- i mean for, 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 eh, kya kehte hain i don't see why the government wouldn't you know look deeply into this and execute this fast because बिजनेसेस का सर्वाइवल का भी इशू है लेकिन अनसर्टेनिटी का भी इशू है कब खुलेंगे नहीं खुलेंगे कितनी देर लगेगी विच ऑल्सो मीन्स कि यू नो पेरोल चूज करें रेंटल चूज करें क्या करें रेंटल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट से निकल नहीं सकते यू नो लॉन्ग टर्म कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स हैं इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑलरेडी हुई है लॉट्स ऑफ इशूज सो सो डोंट यू सी डोंट यू फील की गवर्नमेंट आपकी बात हुई है गवर्नमेंट में इस बारे में कि यू नो एक अक्रॉस द बोर्ड हमें रेंटल सपोर्ट चाहिए इस वक्त i think dekhe uh, rental support to i still feel that it's more of a government honestly jo baatein hui ab tak uh, i mean of course it's also about getting getting them to listen it's, it's, it's yeah. because we're not a recognized industry in that sense you got the export textile other 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 larger industries of construction and all these guys who have already been in touch and have lobbies and and uh, sort of access for many many years i think that is one challenge for retail as a, because retail the organized segment of retail is also a smaller segment compared to the entire nationwide retail uh, sort of trade but i would say that uh, a as far as rental is concerned this is this is more of a sort of a uh, within private matter where a lot of businesses and owners individuals will have to be dealing or malls will have to deal with each other i think what the government sort of has to i mean honestly speaking uh, what we've been working on is for the uh, lobby the government that they should at least help and guide people to give some relief on the rental front as far as you know the payroll cost that's another issue because uh, uh, as a, i mean honestly speaking retail ke andar we've got about uh, we contribute around you know 16% uh, percent to the work national workforce retail and wholesale uh, combined and that's huge uh, you know uh, i'm sure when you guys go to the malls to shops you see a lot of you know people at the stores and at the back end you must realize that there are a lot of people back there so there's a huge fixed cost that uh, need to be sort of addressed i mean uh, there's a reason why you've got huge furloughs and layoffs going on in the us and in uk because they have these social uh, programs there where they where they help people out when when they're unemployed even if it's temporary because for those are temporary unemployment here in pakistan it doesn't work that way it's very it's it's you're left to sort of uh, you know on your own so this is a big challenge right now and honestly speaking we don't have an answer and uh, despite having raised this point uh, time you. and time again so so asen uh, you know uh, brother mentioned one figure which was 0.35% of retail is is e-commerce so if you know you were the government and you were running the country you would be like it's a 0.35% urban centers thode se logon ka masla hai iske bare mein nahi socho you know let's figure out ki humne baki logon ko kaise you know deliver karna hai uh, and any e-commerce won't be able to solve it anyway but the e-commerce ka to fayda hoga 0.35 se agar 3.5% pe bhi chali jayegi that's like a 10x return lekin from a you know running a country perspective it's still 3% so um, 
सो सो जो गवर्नमेंट अटेंशन नहीं दे रही कॉमर्स को क्या वो इन अ वे लॉजिकल नहीं आपकी म्यूट है सॉरी अब आवाज आ रही है यस इसमें ये भी है कि आई थिंक अगर आप बोलें कि यू नो वट एवर स्मॉल सेगमेंट ऑफ द रिटेल मार्केट इट इज you know there's also lack of demand from the number of internet users and the number of mobile phone users that that have smartphones um and i think we also those are structural changes if we need those to grow in order for for e-commerce to also grow so i think agar aap uh, you know I mean, i mean of course the government can say let's solve the problem for the rest of the economy but you know at times uh, and many countries have done this is they have to force the hand of the people into into certain areas so i'll give you a, a, an example and it may be a bit odd but i went to hongzhou uh, last year uh, which is alibaba headquarters and if you go to the public bathroom you have to scan the qr code to get toilet paper so i know i'm downloading that app if i need to get if i need to get toilet paper to get the but what i mean is that you know structurally governments have to sometimes force the hand of the people in order to get them towards digitization so of course i think agar uh, you know if you say that yes we let's focus on the bigger on the the bigger chunk but you have you have a smaller chunk that can actually solve a lot of the issues so we have a sandhya baat kar rahe the in terms of uh, you know relief from a from a rent perspective also uh, you know a lot of our sellers for example wo ghar se kaam karte hain so you know just completely disallowing them to work um, essentially forces you to even go into a deeper hole um, and i think you know the way we the way we sort of come out of this is we have to do it in a very structural way this is not going to be a v uh, you know v shaped recovery um it's going to be more like a u shape where we're going to it's going to take certain times and it's going to everything is going to open up slowly there's going they're going to open up with sops and that's the right way to do it but the it should not be that you just sort of you know force your economy into a contraction you need to figure out what are the areas that can help and uh, rather than looking at it ki bhai sabse zyada impact ka kis kis industry ko hoga look at uh, you know how can i minimize the damage right now because there is damage everywhere you just have to make sure that you come out of this damage in a play, in a way that actually benefits the most number of people and i think that's really you know if that's the way they're looking at it then i would uh, i would urge them to sort of shift that angle a bit uh, to 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 understand ke hum hum you know economy ko kaise recovery wapas de sakte hain yeah so uh, nadia uh, you know since social distancing is most you know more than likely to continue for six months one year uh, maybe a little more or um, so i guess ke you know um, e commerce ke liye opportunity to hai aapke khayal se you know what are your what is your community feeling like ke, uh, will they be able to uh, grow uh, and and do things uh, more uh, you know uh, going forward so while uh, in the last uh, few months or so that we've been seeing other women whose uh, business setups was slightly bigger they slowly started to moving towards e-commerce like you know uh, they showing interest towards building a website but then there are so many more micro sellers uh, those women at the moment we see that they don't have a very positive outlook they want to go for the e-commerce so they want to sign up again the costs involved with setting up their websites or even the digital social media marketing because right now there's so much content online ki organic reach is like literally next to zero at least at the moment so jo unko page se bhi reach milti thi that's very less then again uh, being women there there's a lot of house responsibilities that have suddenly come on to them and they were very small uh, scale women acha again those who were creating the products to artisans again the, with the social distancing or ye jo lockdown hua hai jo inke artisans ye jo inke workers they were making these handicrafts and the things for them wahan bhi there's like you know there's now reaching out to them communication because they're not online so um so the ones that are i would say small businesses those will grow they will go to a e-commerce but jo micro wale they will need a lot of hand holding and right now their sentiments are not very positive they they they're very afraid of the future so what we are trying to do at fempro is to partner with uh, and you know make collaborative with strategic partnerships so let's say uh, your logistics companies like right now we are working with tracks so that you know they they have these uh, even during the lockdown products can be delivered then again uh, we are looking for platforms where they can easily sell out the learning curve now like you know agar ab daraz ya koi bhi marketplace platforms unko sign up karana hai ya agar websites ka hai to mera whether so us pe discussion ho raha tha ki where unki koi initial investment nahi hai they can just you know start selling sign up or was 
sell Karna Shukra, then it's their own website as well. So that's what we are trying to do to help them. But they're, they're very mixed sentiments when with the women-owned businesses that we're seeing. So I want to come to Badr. Badr, uh, you know, I said that e-commerce is only 0.35%. Uh, uh, I, I mean, that's also an opportunity that many employment can be created. You know, considering social distancing will continue and this situation is like this. So we need to employ people. We need to get the goods to move. We need people to buy things and sell things and transactions need to happen. And e-commerce can obviously enable that with, you know, keeping social distancing requirements uh, in mind. So what do you think the government needs to do in order to, one, from an employment perspective, second, as you mentioned, from an export perspective as well, e-commerce can also enable that. So export, employment, and local economy, ko, you know, accelerate what should the government do? How do you think this 0.35% to 10-15%? Yes, good point. And sorry, I'm going back to my slides. Uh, I love your slides. SM, SM or uh, Nadia Mardenge, mere, jo discussion with me, slides pal jati. But uh, these are the people uh, behind these slides, by the way. So just group ke bhi aap baat kar rahe hain, um, they, they, they all have contributed uh, immensely to this policy. And I must appreciate, um, I think we all appreciate that um, this is probably the first time. Main, by the way, I've worked for the government myself. Uh, jo ke apne baat ki hai, uh, so I went to Hongshu in 2001. Uh, the first time, or um, uh, Alibaba ki tha, Jack Maher uski bivi kathi ko milne. So I, I I remember going from Shanghai to Hongshu in a train, or I was probably the only uh, black or a brown guy in that train, and every kid was <laughs> around me. Ye kon banda aa gaya hai, mari train mein. Or tha wo English bhi nahi tha, itna zada, so everything was in Chinese, and there was no Google Translate, so it was not easy. Uh, but um, Wo, uh, so, so I have government work and I can tell you, uh, Shahjan, I can share with you very confidently that I have seen many policies, I have seen consultative sessions, hote dekhi hai, but I think this was one great example in which we saw real value addition in the private sector ki, or contribution and uh, co-ownership hai with the government. Uh, we, have, we have debated a lot, we have debated with all the stakeholders, uh, we have had heated debates and, and you can imagine that if we have a bike or a bike, we don't have a heated debate. So, uh, so you can imagine that we didn't leave anyone uh, from the state bank to customs, FPR, everyone. But very honestly, uh, the only reason we were able to really leverage all of this was that our Ministry of Commerce, logically not and pragmatically, nothing emotional. We never wanted our own purpose when you talked about fact. Ki baat ki, is 0.35% or less than half a percent ko 2%, 5%, 10%, 30% pe leke jaya jaya. So we all worked towards that. And this policy was launched in October 2019 by the Ministry of Commerce. Website pe available on ki, uh, jo audience mein se koji jake dekhna chaye, wahan jake download kar sakte hai usko. Aur usme ek jo important cheez dekhne wali hai, wo right side pe mene highlight ki hui hai slide pe, are the nine pillars. So uh, the policy revolves around these nine pillars. And, and isme jo bhi aap baat kar rahe the, in every angle of e-commerce, in every perspective of the value chain, the interventions or suggestions we have tried to embed in it. So for example, we haven't had a discussion about this, but there is also a issue of consumer trust and merchant trust. That is also a very big challenge. In the COD, there is a deficit of trust. So how do we do that? How do we do that? Uh, financial regulations, how do we do that? Youth or SMEs or women entrepreneurs, how do we do that? What role of SMEDA, SME, TEFTA, ka, PVTC, ka, wagara, wagara, ka, organizations? Ka. Ek aur, uh, bhi ki ke, the retail chain stores are not properly regulated or organized nahi hai, structure within the government to monitor or work with them. This is a very challenge logistics. Ka bhi hai. In the last few years, these uh, logistics companies have popped up, which are genuinely contributing to the bottom line of the country. And last miles, majority of them, which includes the Raz Kepani Dex, and there are tons of them. There are now 49 of them, to be precise, or 50, which we have recently worked with the government. And I'm talking about the last two weeks, that we have worked with the last two weeks, and then we have worked with the provincial ministries, and with the home departments. We have given e-commerce deliveries ki explicit permission that they would be able to get Of course, they are not ideal. Uh, for example, in Sindh, they didn't allow non-essentials in Punjab. Mein allow so both provinces have their own autonomy and they have their own decisions. 
बट एटलीस्ट वी आर टॉकिंग टू दैम एंड वी आर नाउ टेकिंग इट टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेप अच्छा एक स्टेप हो गया और उसमें जो सबसे अच्छी बात है एंड आई अप्रीशिएट द इंडस्ट्री हेयर एस एन बी है एस एन दर सारे हैं दैट ये जितनी शिपिंग कंपनीज थी लॉजिस्टिक्स कंपनीज थी लास्ट माइल डिलीवरी कंपनीज हैं दे ग्रीड टू अ सर्टन कोड ऑफ कॉन्डक्ट थ्रू एस ओ पीज एंड एंड एक्चुअली विच आर नॉट ईजी एंड आई नो के स्टाफ के अंदर जो कि आपका ऐसा कैडर है जिसने हर वक्त रोड पर होना है उनके ऊपर इन्फोर्स करना उनको ट्रेन करना उनके लिए फैसिलिटीज लाना आर नॉट ईजी Uh, and it's at times not viable, feasible because बहुत thin margins पे काम हो रहा होता है But yes, the government supported us and we did uh, work hard uh, on that and and I think that went well. So in सारे pillars के ऊपर policy में काम हो रहा है and this is how it is structured. So policy का एक outcome ये था कि National E-commerce Council formulate हो गई है तो on the left side आप देखते हैं कि e-commerce council का क्या role है All of this is in the policy जो कि आप बाद में जाके देख सकते हैं और this e-commerce council reports to the prime minister on a regular basis. Um, so that's uh, that's the structure. Or sorry, or usme um, aap dekhte hain ki council kaise structured hai. So we have the public sector and we have the private sector. Aapko private sector chota nahi lagna chahiye. Right side pe uh, actually usme uh, ek ek point mein panch panch nominations hain. So usme five representatives SMEs ke hain, panch wali online market place. So it's very well diversely represented by different sectors. Usme SMEs bhi hain, usme large market places bhi hain, usme IT companies bhi hain. Pasha ki apni seat hai. and uh, because that's a big issue for uh, everybody because the entire system in pakistan has been geared towards container load uh, b2b uh, exports be it the state bank um, uh, regulations be it customs uh, processes uh, even as far as the, the commercial banks are concerned so we've been working on that with the with all the stakeholders and logistic companies especially because they are the uh, cpl they are the ones who facilitate these uh, Uh, shipments, micro exports, uh, we call them. So, uh, isme basically the the point is that we've been working. This is part of the sort of the implementation side of the e-commerce policy, uh, uh, which where we have been working with trying to bridge between uh, uh, SME and large uh, um, uh, uh, businesses that wa- that want to or even have been conducting uh, uh, export, which is direct to the customer. B two C, जो export होती है, normal जो वो एक एक शर्ट हो गया एक दो जूते हो गए एक लेदर प्रोडक्ट हो गया एंड सो ऑन व्हिच व्हिच आर रेगुलेशंस वर नॉट गेट अप फॉर सो वी जस्ट ट्राइंग टू वी हैव बीन वर्किंग जस्ट बिफोर दिस इनफैक्ट शटडाउन वी वर वर्किंग वेरी हार्ड एवरी कपल ऑफ डेज वी वर हैविंग सेशंस ब्रिंगिंग द कस्टम्स टुगेदर स्टेट बैंक टुगेदर वेरी पॉजिटिव रोल फ्रॉम स्टेट बैंक एंड मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड प्राइवेट कंपनीज एज़ वेल एंड द लॉजिस्टिक्स कंपनीज एज़ वेल सो इट्स इट्स अ टीम एफर्ट रियली एंड आई थिंक दिस इज हाउ the public sector and private sector need to are uh, the, uh, the collaboration is the only way forward uh, to imp- to imp- uh, improve the e-commerce ecosystem and really you know uh, make a leap frog and make big jumps uh, in terms of uh, increasing our numbers and i think exports uh, because the, the government and generally the nation has been uh, focus on exports so uh, this is a very key export that actually is being classified jo already jo shipment ja rahi hain they are going you know uh, uh, under the radar and the, the money that's coming in is coming uh, classified as remittances so actually the classification of this these funds coming in are also in the wrong place they're supposed to be in export proceeds so you can actually measure them and of course as you guys know when you measure something and then, then that's the best when you can take action on it and it's visible to you so i think there are a lot of issues here which we we're, we're trying to address and of course everybody is uh, involved here sorry so i just asked when they had talked about the value chain of e-commerce mein bahut choti choti nitty gritties hain तो डेवल इज इन द डिटेल्स कि क्या क्या चीजें फिक्स होने वाली हैं। आई गिव यू वन क्विक एग्जांपल आल्सो सॉरी आई नो मैंने आपको इंटरप्ट किया माजरत कि स्टेट बैंक के साथ हम ये भी काम कर रहे हैं कि जो ऑनलाइन पेमेंट्स बाहर जानी है कुछ ऐसी सर्विसेज जो पाकिस्तान में नहीं अवेलेबल फॉर एग्जांपल आपको क्लाउड होस्टिंग करनी है अमेजोन पे या माइक्रोसॉफ्ट पे या गूगल पे सो यू टू पे देम अब्रॉड इसी तरह आपने डिजिटल मार्केटिंग की पेमेंट्स करनी है सो नाजिया कैन प्रॉब्ली रिलेट टू दैट कि आपने फेसबुक को बाहर ज्यादा पैसे भेजने हैं या गूगल को भेजने हैं या एंड ऑफ कोर्स दराज एंड एवरीवन सो वो भी भेजने आसान नहीं थे पैसे कब so humne um, we are working with the state bank to get a white list of these uh, popular services taaki wo white listed honge aur unko koi bhi paise quickly bhej sakega 
सो दीज स्मॉल लिटिल थिंग्स विल हर किसी का डेल्टा इंप्रूव होता जाएगा तो इवेंचुअली दिस लेस देन हाफ अ परसेंट विल ग्रो फर्दर सिग्निफिकेंटली बिकॉज जैसे मैंने आपको एक स्लाइड दिखाई क्रॉस बॉर्डर बहुत बड़ी ऑपर्चुनिटी है कि हमारी वैल्यू एडेड प्रोडक्ट्स अच्छी पैकिंग में अच्छी तरह बन के स्टैंडर्ड्स को कंप्लाई करके टाइमली शिपमेंट्स होके अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर बाहर जा सकें और जैसे जसवंत ने क्या उनकी जो पैसे आ रहे हैं वो हमें अपने बाहर खाला या पोखो या किसी के पास ना भेजने पड़े बल्कि हम फॉर्मली उनको रेमिटेंस डिक्लेयर करके पाकिस्तान के अंदर ला सकें और पाकिस्तान के जो ड्यू फॉरेन एक्सचेंज है वो रिजर्व इंक्रीज कर सकें सो वी रियली वर्किंग ऑन द होल वैल्यू चेन विद ऑल द स्टेक होल्डर्स ऑन द स्टेक होल्डर सो ऐसा नहीं चीज बताएं कि दराज जो है अली बाबा तो ऑब्वियसली स्टार्टेड विद क्रॉस बॉर्डर से यू नो प्लेटफॉर्म स्टार्ट हुआ एंड देन टाबा केम इन एंड टीम और केम इन तो जो दराज का मॉडल है उसके अंदर हाउ इंपोर्टेंट आर एक्सपोर्ट्स इन क्रॉस बॉर्डर ट्रेड या इट्स अ इट्स अ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन सो आई थिंक वी हैव मोर रिसेंटली स्टार्टेड फोकसिंग ऑन ऑन द एक्सपोर्ट साइड um we launched uh, dex sports there as exports essentially and what we do is we we are working with alibaba.com to get pakistani exporters listed and maintained on on the uh on alibaba.com so we're doing that through through daraz um but of course we also you know in terms of cross border we we look at both the import side as well as the export side so we're building up the export side significantly but there is also a small component of our business which is you know things that are in china that uh, that we bring into pakistan when someone buys it from daraz so what i would say here is that obviously i think uh, we realize that it's uh, it's super important to grow the export side and in this we have started working with a lot of partners to to address this area and a lot of the work that uh, that aswanya and brother are doing in the entire private sector is doing will hopefully help uh, you know improve that and give us a better and a bigger supply at the end of the day it's also a supply uh, you know uh, element um and when i look at the priority from ali baba side um you know the pakistan is 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 number i think 8 or 10 in terms of the highest priority for all their countries globally in terms of being able to cater to the exports so you know even even those companies internally the they're really looking at the potential of pakistan to be a to be a big exporter uh in the future Very good. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, in your communities and and among women entrepreneurs, uh, is there a focus on exports other than selling to you know selling clothes to Pakistani women outside? Uh, mostly no. It's mostly uh, when I see the exports are again fashion and fashion accessories, and that is more to the Pakistani women. Well, but there is a segment. There is uh, this export thing, which is your home thing, your traditional products from Pakistan, like our yachts and crafts, trucks. That they are exporting, and they are some of them are supplying to you know small uh, niche shops abroad, uh, especially to the U.S. and um they are not they're not necessarily just focused because that's focused more at the international market but basically handicrafts or aapke jo the ones that are popular with uh, the international market are your traditional khussas and you your more of the traditional pakistani stuff the ones the rest of them in the fashion uh, category are uh, basically catering to the women diaspora uh, internationally but then again that is they they do we always get these queries k fine you send all these clothes abroad to so cheaper kya hoga and i am courier kitne zyada charges lag rahe but they are looking for avenues to export but essentially uh, more the fashion category and the lifestyle these handmade handicrafts category so i request everyone to you know uh, share your closing comments 2 minutes each whatever you want to say uh, we can start with asmita thank you um i would just like to say that uh, uh, i mean i think uh, as far as um, the e-commerce i mean i think it's it's the great thing is that um, uh, i mean from the prime minister down and ministry of commerce and the private sector even the other stake public stakeholders like a state bank customs and all the others i mean it, there's a good with a big focus on e-commerce and i think that's the right thing because that is the future very clearly and i think more so now with this uh, situation where traditional retail brick and mortar retail will struggle in, in comparison and, and and people will uh, uh, shift i mean that, i mean in a way the trajectory at least in my opinion e-commerce the the, the trajectory was already uh, uh, reasonably steep and you know, i think we will see a, a bump up in terms of uh, the focus on e-commerce in terms of the uh, uh, the opportunity in terms of uh, shifting from 
uh, traditional methods to digital uh, you know sales and online and i think yes the export side might be a bit uh, um, you know squeezed right now and in the near future but i think locally i think we have to focus now on local you know uh, products local economy local customers uh, uh, wherever we can and even find synergies and collaborations but in this time there'll be a lot of you know things happening a lot of shake, a big shake up going on so i think it's a good time uh, in terms of the future maybe opportunities obviously it's tough in other ways health you know lives need to be taken care of businesses are struggling suffering but i think moving forward we have to look at the bright the positives and what the opportunities that may be be created in the future even it's difficult right now to sort of look, look in from that lens but just wanted to add that thank you okay. thank you esan yeah so i think um, generally you know there's a lot of pessimism uh, right now and and uh, and i think what i would sort of like to highlight is that uh, you know in uh, i think though in the short term there is obviously going to be a contraction in 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 generally the economy in the retail segment as well and there's no doubt and it's naive to think otherwise but i think um, you know in the medium term we will come out of this covid is not going to last forever recessions don't last forever they come in cycles and and this is not one that i think is going to be one that is going to have a structural negative impacts there is going to be i think when there's a you know for example if you look at, at an economic impact of an l shape it just sort of has a structural impact which stays like that for a long period of time and it would be it would result if we had many many years of potentially uh, lockdowns and i think i think uh, so people should not feel uh, that the world is going to end it's really about finding what are the areas of growth and opportunity and today we talked about e-commerce but you know the areas in in technology and digitization whether it's agri tech health tech uh, uh you know fintech anything with tech at the end of it but you know it's uh, i think the idea is that there's a lot of opportunities and you have to figure out what are the uh, you know which areas can you find the right opportunities to be able to solve uh, the problems and and really be able to build a product that can quickly solve uh, that can quickly solve people's problems um so i think uh, and i'll actually maybe there's a there's a there's a question right now on on the on fmcgs in pakistan so maybe i'll just answer that as well yeah. really quickly um you know one thing that we noticed is uh, is when when covid happened uh, grocery had a huge uh, huge uh, uh, demand influx so um, there was about in month over month there was almost a 50% growth in in terms of uh, in terms of order and there was 70% growth in terms of items so what that meant is a the orders were growing significantly but also the basket sizes were increasing right so people were trying to they were they were sort of worried about panic buying and thinking ki bhai falana cheez khatam ho jayegi so let me let me stock up on that and a demand in fresh produce and fresh goods increased even more dramatically we almost saw a 9x growth in things uh, that are like the fresh fruits and vegetables so i think uh, generally i think the fmcg sector actually has a positive uh, future um the 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 area of struggle for fmcg and, uh, and i'll also be clear on that is generally it's uh, you know it's the value item they can be very low item value so it might be 200 rupee thing that you might be selling and then you also have in logistics costs etc and, and payment costs so sometimes you have to sort of be watchful to ensure that your basket sizes in fmcg are big enough that it makes sense to do that business so i think uh, you know I, i think there's a positive trend and we look very very positively towards fmcg um because uh for us the key element of fmcg that's attractive is that it's things that you buy every day um you know every day you'll need soap every day you'll need uh, you'll need your you know uh, general goods that you buy through uh, through fmcg companies but you don't need a phone every day so uh, i think that area of the of e-commerce has a has a bright future inshallah thank you jee sanjeev jee there's a question uh, from umar khan uh, about the recommendations to e-commerce teams existing e-commerce teams for retail fashion brands so i mean obviously i think uh, it's a tough time but i think what first and foremost obviously it's about resources i think uh, fashion brands should be focusing shifting more their resources onto e-commerce as much as possible be it you know uh, in terms of what i mean there are different ways to do so and i think the most important thing as well is to increase sales channels for example if you have your own website fair enough if you have, if you can uh, sell through social media if you can get onto a, a marketplace you know i think it's about expanding just like with retail traditional retail you have multiple stores so you need to sort of open up sales channels whichever can, is operative right now you know uh, you got the uh, uh, raz over here and you got others who are working so i think that's these two things are critical and of course there'll be more trends that will come up moving forward which we're already seeing to some extent in china and other places where you know live streaming uh, cloud shopping you know these kind of things collaborations 
between brands as well might make sense as well you know complementary sort of products you know, we have to find synergies and ways to cope with this current situation and be inventive uh, and innovative much more than before I and mean, that's uh, i think uh, how i would sum it up thank you nadia closing comments so i feel that this uh, particular i mean the crisis of this pandemic that we going through where it has all its negatives but it's also like a positive or an opportunity for the micro and small businesses jo ye ek slow period aaya hai to sit you know to focus on their digital strategy jo pehle nahi jana chahte online they wanted to stay restricted to you know retails or multi brand stores or for that matter just exhibitions to basically think and put their uh, your the digital strategy into place and i would suggest again as sundar also said a three pronged approach which is your social commerce through your social media uh, which is your facebook pages instagram groups etc and then having your own website as well and then now there are services where you don't need to invest so much into technology when to make your own website and listing on marketplaces uh, again another thing that small and micro businesses could focus on during this time is to learn the much needed digital skills like agar aapne product list karna online to what what should the photography be like rather than this copy pasting or taking uh, pictures from online isse pehle tak they always had the reason hamare paas time nahi but this is the time that's been given to you use this positively and you know make the strategy focus on the skill so that once this is over you can just focus on your uh, growth and because the new normal is it is online i mean offline channels are not going to be around for a while this is what i personally feel thank thank you nadia and uh, i i think uh, your the platforms that you build for women entrepreneurs agar wo aaj hote to unki aur zyada utility badh jati so uh, i think all, all women miss them uh, but so then much certain things just happen but then there are other platforms you can still connect so it doesn't matter <laughs> बिल्कुल जी नहीं थैंक यू आई थिंक एवरी वन वॉज स्पॉट ऑन एंड 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 जस्ट टू टेक क्यू फ्रॉम देयर आई एग्री के बिल्कुल चैनल्स जो हैं वो चेंज हो रहे हैं सब कुछ हो रहा है बट आई थिंक एक चीज जो मैं देख रहा हूँ जो नादिया आपने भी हाईलाइट की है सन और हसन यार के लोग चेंज समझ रहे हैं कि आ रही है बट एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर रहे रियालिटी को सो पाकिस्तान में पीपल आर नॉट वेरी ओपन टू अनलर्निंग एंड रीलर्निंग वी डू do these conversations in the drawing rooms sitting and talking but when it comes to practicality we don't really change or we don't even try to change i think that's the challenge uh kuch pivoting ki zarurat hai realignment ki zarurat hogi aur wo hum nahi karne ko taiyar i see a lot of businesses uh and and i think abhi for example pakistan mein bahut open practice mergers and acquisitions ki nahi in a small business it would die down it would close up but it will not sell it to its own competitor or a potential Uh, uh, other buy in the market so i think uh, what we ek ek ye point tha dusra mera point ek aur important ye tha ki jab hum e-commerce ki baat karte hain to hamare jo freelancing community ya general registered graduates hain everyone thinks ki main ek website khadi kar lu aur usme do tasveeren lagaun to mera e-commerce ka kaam pura ho gaya actually that is probably the last thing you need to do jaise uh, asfandiar ne baat ki supply chain mein bahut opportunity hai aur wo ye challenges hain aur wo sab opportunities hain कि कैसे सही जगह से सप्लायर्स को पकड़ना है उनकी हैंडीक्राफ्ट किसके अच्छे हैं मैंने कहा जाके बेचना मार्केट प्लेस में भी हर मार्केट प्लेस इज नॉट फॉर एवरी प्रोडक्ट जिस तरह अभी ऐसे ने बात की कि एफ एम सी जी द्रास के लिए इंपॉर्टेंट है बट एफ एम सी जी शायद एच सी पे जाके नहीं बेचेंगे एच सी इज अ वेरी प्रीमियम हैंड क्राफ्ट प्रोडक्ट कैटेगरी तो आई थिंक हमें सब जो डिजिटल स्ट्रेटेजी की बात की ना दिया ने वो बहुत ज्यादा डीप डाइव करने की जरूरत है I think what we try to do in Pakistan is do a lot of copy paste. कि वो मैं मैंने उसका ad देखा है बस मैं भी अपना उस तरह का ad लगा लूँ। ये जिसने आपने bloggers के एक ज़माने में देखा था एक किसी ने blogging शुरू की है सब ने blogging शुरू कर दी कि मैं Google Adsense से पैसे बना लूँ। फिर एक time आया अभी आजकल Instagram पे everyone is an MQA। वो आपने सिखाया था? वो आप नहीं सिखाया था? हाँ वो मैंने सिखाय सो आई थिंक किसी ने अपनी नीच नहीं डेवलप की हर किसी ने देखा कि अच्छा वो पर्सन ए की ये वाली चल रही है मोबाइल्स वाली ब्लॉग तो मैं भी अपनी मोबाइल से की कॉपी पेस्ट बना लूँ उसी तरह का लोगो भी बना लूँ नाम भी वैसा ही होना चाहिए मेरा वो हर किसी के नाम पे पीडिया था तो हर किसी ने अपने पीडिया ही नाम एंड पे ना बिकी पीडिया तो आई आई एम नॉट सेंग के करना नहीं चाहिए बट आई एम सेंग के हमें भेड़ चाल के बजाय दिस इज द राइट टाइम कि हम नीच को पकड़ के डिफरेंट चीज़ों को पकड़ के डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स को पकड़ के हम ये ना देखें टॉप सेलिंग क्या है हम ये देखें कि लॉन्ग टेल ऑफ 
प्रोडक्ट्स क्या है और मैं उनको कैसे आप ला सकता हूँ इन दैट ग्राफ सो आई थिंक दिस लॉट ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी तो मेरे मैसेज यही होगा कि प्लीज फोकस ऑन योर करंट नीच अगर आप स्टेशनरी का काम करते हैं उसी में ई कॉमर्स देखें ये ना देखें कि दराज का ई कॉमर्स चला तो मैं भी एक जनरल मल्टीपर्पज मल्टी प्रोडक्ट स्टोर खड़ा कर लूँ बल्कि आप अपनी स्टेशनरी की नीच में ही फोकस करें और उसी में देखें क्या और अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं और उसको कैसे मैं पेवेट करके उसके अंदर ही उसमें स्केल ला सकता हूँ सो आई थिंक दैट्स माई लर्निंग कि हम अगर अपनी नीच में रहें फोकस रखें एंड वन लास्ट थिंग इट्स ऑन मोर अबाउट पार्टनरशिप इन ई कॉमर्स आप अपनी वेबसाइट खाली बना के कुछ नहीं कर सकते अगर आपने पेमेंट सही इंटीग्रेट नहीं किया अगर आपने लॉजिस्टिक सही इंटीग्रेट नहीं किए अगर आपने अपना इन्वेंट्री के सही सॉफ्टवेयर नहीं लगाए अगर आपने डिजिटल मार्केटिंग सही नहीं की अपने कस्टमर्स को कॉमेंट्स पर रिप्लाई नहीं सही किया so there are tons of other things within the e-commerce value chain which needs to be taken care of and and actually uh, we discussed that in IC Karachi just before uh, the uh, lockdown if you remember i had a session on those the magic moment of e-commerce from this subject baat ki thi so i think uh, that's that's important uh, from my side ke uh, i think har sector mein opportunity hai gaadiyon ko tire bhi bikenge pencils bhi bikengi khana peena bhi bikega so just to give you one quick last example of लोगों ने कैसे इनोवेट किया इन द रिसेंट डेज कराची में कुक फूड डिलीवरी नॉट अलाउड बट सम रेस्टोरेंट्स ने फूड किट्स बना के बेचने शुरू कर दी उन्होंने कहा ठीक है कुक्ड नहीं है ये सब कुछ अनकुक्ड है और हम ये डिलीवर कर रहे हैं सो रेस्टोरेंट भी चल गया डिलीवरी भी हो गई और कंप्लाइंस भी हो गई सो आई मीन यू नीड टू रियली इनोवेट एंड थिंक डिफरेंटली एंड आई थिंक देर आर वेज टू बट अगेन नॉट ईजी जैसे एस ने कहा शॉर्ट टर्म इट विल भी चैलेंजिंग but medium term if we keep on pivoting and as nadia said keep on learning and relearning uh, i think we can certainly survive and thrive so uh, i completely agree with brother ke you know it's it's a challenging time lekin aur nadia ne bhi ek kaha ke this is also a time to reimagine yourself and to figure out ke aapne relevant kaise rehna hai whatever you're doing whatever business you're in Uh, so eventually it comes down to relevance are you relevant for your customers are you you know thinking about them how how can you serve them and obviously is new environment mein bhi nayi nayi needs hongi nayi zaroorate hongi logon ki aur ye i think short term jo zyada lockdown wali situation hai ye jaise hum isse nikal jate hain to the world is going to open up and it's going to open up with a lot of opportunities so i would really recommend to everyone ki agle ek do mahine jo jisme hum zyada tough situation mein जिसमें बहुत सारे लोगों के बिजनेस बिल्कुल ही क्लोज हैं दे कॉन्ट ऑपरेट इट्स ऑल्सो अ टाइम टू थिंक के आपने अपने बिजनेस को रीइन्वेंट कैसे करना है पेवेट कैसे करना है और रिलेवेंट कैसे करना है एंड एंड आई शो यू कि इकोनॉमी इंशाल्लाह रिकवर करेगी इट्स जस्ट अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ कि हम आप उसमें क्या रोल प्ले करेंगे कितने लोगों को एम्प्लॉय करेंगे कितने कस्टमर्स को सर्व करेंगे सो इफ यूर पॉजिटिव तो यू मोर लाइकली टू प्ले इन बिगर रोल एंड इफ यू लेट दिस नेगेटिविटी यू नो Pull you down, so then obviously uh, there's no there's no bottom to down. <laughs> you you will have to recover one day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Asin, Asin Jhar, Badar, and Nadia. Thank you for joining us. I think it was a great session, great learning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. 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 Thank